Hello, my fine feathered friends. It's Carla, and I'm here again in my kitchen for an episode of Where Cooking Begins. Today, I am going to be making chicken cutlets with spicy coconut dressing. This is a very popular recipe from Where Cooking Begins, but I never got to make a video for it in the past. The great thing about recipes is as they live, so do they change, and we change and we grow together. So today, I'm gonna do something different with my chicken that makes it even better, in my opinion. So if you loved it before, you're really gonna go bananas for it this time. I'm gonna make the dressing first because it's got some ingredients in it that I want to mingle and do their thing so that the dressing is ready when I get done. This is like fatty, spicy, tangy, bright. It's got tropical vibes. It's got Asian vibes and it's just really good. So I'm combining fresh lime juice. A lot of people ask about the citrus juicer and I'll link it. Speaking of things that you don't have to buy, it costs you nothing to like and subscribe. Drop a comment. In the thing, it really helps me out. Some people just comment, comment, and I'll, I'll take it. It's, it's all good. Let's see. We're going for a quarter cup here, people. If you did not have a lime and you wanted to make this, use unsweetened rice vinegar or even distilled white vinegar, I think would be like lovely in this. Recipe calls for half of a red chili, which it's really up to you. You can use more if you want to. You could use less if you want to. And you can use a different kind of chili. I'm using the microplane to grate it for a couple reasons. One is that the chili will be so kind of finely pureed that it'll be really easy to distribute it throughout the dressing. The other reason is once I get down to the ribs and the seeds, the seeds don't really pass through the teeth of the microplane. So it's sort of naturally like removes most of the seeds. It's all just like pureed and sticking to the underside. Got garlic. I'm definitely not the first person to combine lime, chili, coconut, ginger, garlic. I mean, there's a whole song written about the lime and the coconut. I mean, <laughs> I, did not, I did not invent it. Pina coladas. Speaking of another great song and great food, I have not had one yet this summer. I need one. It's like, where's my swim up bar, you know? That's about an inch of ginger, something like that. What is this missing? Tons of acidic ingredients, tons of bright ingredients. We've got pungency and we've got spice. And now it is time to bring on the fat. The recipe calls for a can of full fat coconut milk. You want to not disturb your can of coconut milk. Don't shake it before you open it. Don't rattle it all around because to finish the dressing, I'm actually going to use that layer of coconut cream that's on the top of a can of coconut. And I really just want the fat. I'm not after the coconut milk, which would dilute this quite a bit. I just wanna take the layer of the solids. Oh, this can did not wanna conform all of the coconut creams at the bottom. All right, we still found you. I'm definitely gonna save the rest of the can. I will freeze the coconut milk for my next curry or my next cow soy or whatever it is that I wanna make. The coconut cream in this dressing is acting like the oil in a vinaigrette. But what it's bringing is a ton of really sweet, concentrated, fragrant coconut flavor, which I really wanted in the mix, but I didn't want to work too hard for it. So I've got a lot of sweetness from the coconut. I've got a little bit of spiciness from the chili, definitely punchy, acidic, and bright from the lime. I want it to be pretty seasoned, very concentrated. It's gonna get diluted a lot more when it's tossed with the iceberg at the end. At this point, I want a dressing that just has a ton of flavor packed into a very small amount of space, which is a long way of saying concentrated. Mmm. Amazing what a little salt can do. Now that that's balanced and all the liquid and all of the seasonings are combined, I'm gonna put in unsweetened shredded coconut. And when you add the coconut, because it's like solid and dry and flaky, it might cause the dressing to seize. And if that happens or it looks too tight or it looks weird or clumpy, it's normal. So just keep going. This looks fine. It's just now got texture of pieces of coconut. Before I move on, literally a truck just pulled up. I am not, not a paid actor at all. 
Truck pulled up, doorbell rang. Guy said, are you Carla? I said, yes I am. This box is for you. I think I know what's inside it. My friend, Josh Nyland, and his wife, Julie, who make this unbelievably beautiful fish press, called the St. Peter Fish Press, named for his fish restaurant, famously renamed by me as a Pressy Downey. I use mine all the time. I mean, I don't wanna say I'm famous for using it, but like, I have been known to use it on many occasions, but he has a new one and he wanted to send it to me and I have no idea what makes it new or different, but we can actually use it in this recipe today. So the fact that it showed up, oh my, oh my God. That is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. This is a disco, oh, wow, 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 sorry. <laughs> it's out. This guy's in, thank you so much. St. Peter, fish weight. Guys, it's worth every single penny. Look at this thing. It's Xanadu. It's like the Xanadu of Pressy Downies. Here is where I am going to deviate from my very own recipe, which called for boneless, skinless chicken thighs. The reason I called for boneless, skinless chicken thighs, I will be honest with you, is because as a recipe developer, at that time, I had had it bashed into my brain that people want two things. They want boneless, skinless, or they want skin on, bone in. But what is really the ideal situation is skin on, boneless. So you get all of the payoff of the crispy skin and the cutlet vibes, but you can cut right into it like a cutlet. Why can't we have both? We can have both. And I believe in you guys, because in my experience, having somebody say, people don't want this, this isn't what people want, people don't want to touch chicken, who said? You don't know all of the people. So I know some of the people and some of the people that I know want to learn new stuff and they want to do new things. And you know what they want? They want skin on boneless. That is what they want and that is what we are going to get. I will show you how to do it. All you have to do is take out one bone. It's not a big deal. Of all of the bones in the chicken, this is the one to freaking get rid of. So next thing we're going to do, I'm going to call it what it is. It is time for the deboner. <laughs> So working with one thigh at a time, because nobody can work with four. So you've got your glorious, fabulous, dark meat skin. We love the skin, we love crispy stuff, we love fat in this house, all of the things. This is where the thigh bone is. This is why deboning it is really, like, really easy with a chicken thigh, because it's really easy to see both ends of it, and it moves in a straight line. There's no weird curves, there's no other little side bone. It's one end to the other and it's directly kind of underneath the skin. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut down on either side of the bone. I'm trying to get as close to the bone as possible because that's how you waste the least amount of flesh if you're tucked in right next to the bone. And I'm using the tip of the blade and I'm making pretty like short strokes to make sure that like I'm where I need to be all the way to this end which is really like capped with cartilage. So the bone ends in that cartilagey place. Easy. Now we gotta do the other side. So again, one end over there, the other end, you can kind of keep your hand on the middle, pressing down on the bone to anchor it, and just cut down on either side. At this point, because the other side is free, this whole piece is gonna like be more manipulatable at this point. So I'm kind of like now, angling the bone and I'm underneath it. And you can actually go from the other side and going from one side to the other. And now that's just down to this like last little connection. That's it, skin on, boneless, deboner. Now that all four cutlets have been deboned, ironically, we're gonna pound it out. <laughs> so not usually the way it goes, but today that's how it goes. They don't need a whole lot because the cutlet is pretty thin, but I just wanna give them a few tap, tap, taps to make this really thick side a little bit more equal to the other side. So you can see like 
one side has a lot more and the other side is a little flatter. So really just focusing on flattening that side. This will just help it cook more evenly, cook more quickly. Again, if you don't really want to handle the chicken that much, you could move forward without it, but I think it makes for just a better end result, more consistent, more even. All that skin now is flattened out and that's what's gonna get super crispy. I'm not even adding pepper to these. I don't want the pepper to burn in the pan and give it like lots of black flecks. So I'm just going with salt. And we won't miss it because we have spicy in the dressing. It's cutlet time in America. Large skillet. I wanna do all four cutlets at once if I can so we can get this all done in one batch. So I need a little oil. I'm using less oil today than the recipe called for because I have the fat. So in the original recipe is skinless boneless and there wasn't as much fat to get things going and to encourage browning, but you do need some. And then the chicken is gonna go in skin side down because I really am going for maxing out brown and crispies on the first side. So the first thing that the thighs do when they hit the hot pan is they contract. That's the protein in the thigh shrinking and shortening when it hits that heat. So they kind of like contract and ball up. And I wanna use the spatula to encourage them to flatten back out so all of the skin or the surface is making great contact with the pan. And you don't have to, but I am going to use my brand new pressy downy to press these guys down. You can use a brick. You can use a smaller skillet with a piece of parchment paper underneath. You can use a less expensive cast iron. You could also use your sad non-rainbow, just beautiful stainless steel pressy downy, or you could not press down at all and periodically just go back in with the spatula, make sure everybody is flat, rotate the pan for even browning, and these are just gonna go undisturbed for as long as it takes to get a beautiful brown crust on that underside. Chicken has been going for about six minutes and now I am going to reveal one of my favorite techniques for cooking chicken, which is called kill it on the first side. I showed this technique once before for a chicken breast recipe. We will link that video over here, but the thing is really, you wanna just go all the way, 90% of the way on the very first side to max out the browning, max out the crisping. Most of the heat is gonna slowly, gradually go through the rest of the flesh until there's only a very light uncooked part on the very top of the fleshy side. Turn it over, you've got all the crispiness, you've got all the browned bits, and then I'm really just turning it over for 30 seconds to a minute on the second side to finish cooking through, but it's 90% of the way there already. So now I have gorgeous cutlets and I have gorgeous iceberg lettuce. I love iceberg, I love shreddice, but I also love an iceberg slab. I think it is fabulous on sandwiches and my crispy fish sandwich. I think it's over here. <laughs> has slabs of iceberg, which I really enjoy. I put slabs of iceberg on my smash burgers, and I think we should all appreciate the crunchiness, the wateriness, the fabulousness, and the availability of the iceberg lettuce. So I don't want a shred us, and I don't want a strip. I want like slabs. I want pe big pieces. So you can do those by hand. The inner guys are pretty much perfect, and they're gonna get tossed with this nice fluffy cilantro leaf and tender stem situation that is already waiting for its iceberg friend. So that's about the size that I want. I don't know what that is. Koala palm? Yes, it is the size of a koala's palm. All the koalas are like, my hands are bigger than that. <laughs> this is dressing from before. So it's thickened up a bit, that shredded coconut hydrated, like absorbed some of it. So those chunks are bigger now. Mmm. Wow, it's really coconutty now. Delicious. Okay, dressing is going on. 
Every salad I think is more delicious if you toss it with your hands and it is also a proven fact that every salad is more delicious when eaten with hands. I've taught my children, the key is use the fingertips. Uh, this is what we had to tell Cosmo. You can use your fingertips to eat, but if there's food on the palm of your hand, you've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, please comment below if you eat salad and not only eat salad with your hands, but also believe it is more delicious with your hands. I'm gonna do this platter style. Four cutlets to me is dinner for two people. One cutlet is not enough for an adult human. So it's two and two, but I just think it's nice. Plate it up family style. We're gonna cutlet. Everybody loves cutlet night. I love hot and cold things together. I'm very excited for this. Cutlets, the way I want them to be, neither here nor there, but somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be the way ah, that everybody told you it had to be. The fact is, I am most excited for cutlet night in America when I have skin on, no boat. <laughs> you can do what you wanna do. This is, there's room for everybody. We're evolving, we're improving, we're experimenting. Chicken cutlet doesn't have to be breaded. It doesn't have to be like with a bunch of Parmesan melted over the top. It doesn't have to be a skinless boneless breast, that's for sure. Mmm, not bad. Mmm, mmm, mmm. No words. The coconut flavor is so tantalizing to me. And it's like very velvety and sweet and creamy on your palate without being heavy or dairy. And then the lime is just like very there. And the texture of the chicken is just totally incredible and it's juicy inside and it's crispy on the outside. So it's great, you're great, I'm great, the chicken's great, the coconut is great, tropical vibes are great, the new pressy downy is great, everything's great. It's really, it's really looking up. Things are looking up. Just make the lime and the coconut. We're gonna get out of this alive. Mmm, mm-hmm.